Hi, my name is Niklas Hohmann and we are here in the southeastern German area uh, of Franconian Switzerland. And this area is really famous for its rock climbing and its uh, iconic rock formations. And I will talk today about how geology and rock climbing come together in this area. So as a geologist, uh, one of the first questions when uh, we're looking at a piece of rock is how old is that piece of rock? When was this rock actually formed? And here for the Franconian Switzerland, uh, studies have shown that these rocks are approximately 150 to 160 million years old. And th so they're part of the, the epoch called uh, the Jurassic. So you're actually standing in the original Jurassic Park right now. And 150 million years sounds like a lot of time, but for a geologist, it really isn't. And that is because geologists always compare time uh, to the age of the whole Earth. And the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, and that makes 150 million years really not that much of a time. And just to comprehend, if your left fingertip is the formation of the Earth, and your right fingertip is the present, and you spread your arms like that, the rocks that we see here were approximately formed where I drew this line. That is 150 million years. So from a geological perspective, these rocks are not even in puberty. The rocks here in Franconian Switzerland are built by reefs, uh, and you can also see one of these reefs right behind me. But these reefs are very different from what uh, we usually think of when we talk about reefs. Uh, when I thought of reefs before I started uh, studying geology of being something with a lot of corals and some nice fish somewhere where you would like to go on holidays. But these reefs uh, were completely different. Those are, uh, you can call them the triple D reefs. They were deep, dark and dirty. And there was not a single coral, but they were mainly formed of sponges. So this is a reef, but it is a sponge reef. And just to show you that I'm not talking bullshit, uh, we're gonna go down there, we're gonna go for a round of bouldering and I'm gonna show you some of the preserved sponge fossils down there. So now we're at the opposite side of the valley, uh, at the so-called Matterhornwand. And this is my roommate, Max Räuber, who is a really good boulderer. And we're gonna do some bouldering and look at the geology of this rock face here. What's quite special about this place is that it's, um, for sports climbing, it's very important because uh, this is kind of the birthplace of red point climbing. And what you can see up here is one of the original red points uh, from the time where red point climbing was invented. <laughs> Come on. Cool. Easy. <laughs> of course, we are not only here to go bouldering, we're also here because this is one of the few places where you can actually find fossilized sponges of the sponge reefs I was talking about. And if you look at the rock face behind me, this structure here, this roundish thing, this is actually a fossil sponge. And there's even another one down here. And when I was looking through the debris at the floor, I found this. And this is also a fossil sponge, and this is the original shape of these sponges. So they grew upright on the seafloor. And this is quite a rare fossil find. 
just because um, most sponges after they die they disintegrate very fast and if you put something on top of them they will just be flattened and all you will have left is a sponge blob. So before I join my flatmate for bouldering one last piece of information and that is if you look really closely when you're climbing in Franconian Switzerland uh, you can see that the rock can have very different textures and here I just picked up two pieces of rock and the one is a very compact, very light piece of rock, whereas the other one uh, has a, very, a lot rougher texture. It's grayish and you can also see some of these cracks here. And the thing is, these are actually two different types of rock. And as an explanation, the very light, compact one, uh, this is a classic limestone. And you can think of, chemically, limestone is calcium carbonate. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have magnesium carbonate, which is what we usually call, uh, call chalk in climbing and we use on a daily basis. And this rough piece of rock you can find in the Franconian Switzerland is actually right in the middle between your chalk and your limestone. It's called a dolomite or a dolostone and it has the chemical composition. It's a magnesium calcium carbonate. So, um, and something really interesting happens when this normal limestone is uh, transformed into this dolostone. And that is, there is actually a loss of volume. So the rock shrinks slightly. And you can actually see that in the dolostones, there are a lot of cracks. So in areas where you find a lot of dolostones, you will always, uh, your rock will tend to crack easier and uh, the rocks in your climbs will tend to be more loose.